Hi everyone, good morning. Pleasure to have you with us. We're just waiting on Steve to join us in a couple of moments. He should be on. Can everybody hear me? Hey Steve, we can, yes, absolutely. All right, hey, good morning everybody. I'm really excited on this Monday morning. Uh, those of you who are here, great. And those of you who are not, obviously, this will either way get sent to you um, at the end, and this will be your own in your own personal email. And um, just to give you a little heads up, you know, this has been long time uh, waiting for me because with the volatility in the markets, I am literally getting so many people from around the world <coughs> asking me um, to really understand futures. And um, obviously with the uh, market volatility and the day trading requirements for, for trading stocks, I've seen so many people want to jump into, into the futures market and I'm going to, I'm going to go very, very slow here today. I don't care if we're on for an hour, an hour and a half. I'm going to answer questions at the end. This is going to be a webinar for anyone who has any interest in trading futures from someone who's a beginner, someone who's been trading futures, things that I can teach you along the way that enhance your trading. And those of you who are you know, been trading futures for many, many years. Either way, there's a lot of knowledge here that I want to teach. There's no greater joy at this stage of my life than to do this, right? To be able to take a step back after, you know, this August 1st would be 39 years of me trading the markets. And there is just the greatest joy, that's why I built Trade Easy with uh, uh, Joe and Ashling mm -hmm. and the helps of so many people like Albert and Kishore and so many people. And number one, also a lot of you uh, really believing in me and my methods and my, uh, my mentorship and my, my ability to teach all of you. There's no greater joy in my life at this stage than to help each and every one of you change your life. And so when I get calls from Greece, from Australia, from Russia, from all parts of the world, Romania, uh, United States, please, 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 can you teach me how to trade futures? I've, I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars learning and trying to learn, but I can't just get it. Well, you know, this is a, believe it or not, the futures markets for me are the great, greatest markets. Uh, not to say that you can't make money trading stocks with me or trading Forex or crypto. I had people over the weekend making money trading crypto. And I traded nearly 2 billion shares in my life. So for me, really trading the futures markets is a significant uh, asset to trade. And this is why... I really am gonna take my time today, explain things, teach all of you the whole um, beginning to end of the things that I feel, again, that should propel you to understand trading futures, to enhance your trading, and to give you better knowledge of the futures markets, okay? For me, like I said, I spent nine years of my life developing the software and that I use each and every day and the software that you can have at your fingertips. And again, I'll cover all this. There's no greater joy at the end of the day than when I get text messages or phone calls and my phone blows up because as you know, I give my phone number out to the entire world. How people just show me what they're making. And even if it's just paper trading, they're getting it, right? Because I always tell people that this is a marathon, right? Not a sprint. I tell people if you work, hard work works, right? I tell people to ask as many questions as possible during the day. No question is ever stupid. You gotta be proactive as I even teach my children 
in today's world. I tell people that it's my job to help change your life. If you just do the simple math, you can make $500 a day. That's $125,000 a year. If you can make $1,000 a day, you made $250,000 a year. $125,000 a year, $250,000 a year, right? Sorry. Um, so the most important thing is to be consistent, right? And that's hard, right? It's hard. So the approach that I take in teaching the markets is really not the, the, the approach that most educators or mentors will take. I teach during the streaming live channel each and every day during real live markets because the research that I have done for those nine years, close to nine years, I can show you how these patterns, the way I have my overlay set up, my chart set up, my algorithms and everything, the whole package set up, which I'll go over, how these patterns repeat themselves. All you need to trade is to make four to six great trades a day. And that's what I've been telling everybody that that's what my research, whether you're trading the S&P futures, the 30 year bond futures, gold, even equities, Forex, crypto, you'll get, well, you'll get four in the session, in a, in a nine to nine thirty to four session, you'll get four to six great um, phenomenal trades, patterns, uh, strategies that set up in a day. It's really important because I always stress on the five key words, consistency, discipline, confidence, patience, and passion. Well, consistency is what we try to achieve each and every day, right? So I'm here because I'm not in this to be right 50%, 60, 70, 80% of the time. We gotta be 90% or better or else it's not worth it. And for me to do this and for me to trade the way I traded and for me to teach you, we gotta be 90% or better. You know, second, discipline, right? We need to have discipline. As you all know, there's a, a story out there that I told you each and every day about discipline. My first trade that I ever did in my life was, I was on the 40 of the American Stock Exchange and I had $3,000 to my name. The minimum wage was $2.10 an hour. And I go and I decide to open up a brokerage account. And I go a week after I open it, I go buy five Fed 50 calls in American Canon option at two and three quarters. That was the middle of February, uh, October. And by the end, by Christmas time, the stock went from 51 and a half, 52, all the way down to 45. I bought more at one and seven eighths. I bought more at a buck and a quarter. I bought more at seven eighths and get the picture I bought all the way down. I had no, no discipline. I had no money management skills, no nothing. And eventually I still had two and a half more months because February was the expiration date. And by Christmas time, they were trading like a quarter of a dollar. And I never forget, I had my hand I had my head down, my hands on both cheeks, thinking, oh my God, I just blew $3,000 of my money. And some guy patted me on the back around 4.30 and he said, hey kid, go home. You can't turn the machines back on. Just like in that movie, Trading Places, you know, he says, you know, turn the machines back on, right? And then January comes around, the stock's trading around 41, 42, and then basically, about a week before expiration in February, the stock goes from 41, that week before it goes from 41 to 54. Well, at 345, the day of the options were gonna expire, I'm hanging up the phone. I see the broker walking into the crowd to sell my whatever 15 or 20 options that I had bought all the way down. Or, and I hear him say, you know, American Cam, 50 calls, 17 at uh, whatever, $3 or something like that, or and two and a half, three, whatever. And as I see the broker executing the order for me, that was my order, I called in 
my father is right behind me. And he said, are you out? And I said, yeah, I, I'm out. I just sold them. He said, um, when I came on the floor, my father was a floor broker on the American Stock Exchange. He said, when, my, when I came on the floor today, uh, Monday of the week, I found a penny face up and I made a wish that you wouldn't lose any money. So he said, what did you learn from this? I said, whenever you have a losing position, you look for a penny face up. He says, no, you idiot. You never average down. So I had no knowledge. And then I went right after, right five minutes ago, I bought 10 Merrill calls like an idiot. Um, and so I had no idea about money management. And I'm gonna get all this, but I need to tell you these things so that you can remember these stories because what I teach each and every day is visualization and repetition, right? I mean, I am so blessed to be in this, in this, uh, in this career. I love it. There's, I have more passion in my little pinky than probably 10,000 people that I know. I love it. And what fueled me to build Trade Easy is because I was sick and tired of everybody getting hoodwinked, right? I want to teach people the right way. I don't teach the conventional way, sitting in a classroom, teaching. I did that. I went to an online trading. I sat in the classroom. I got up after like 45 minutes, my partner, Joe, and I, the guy started chasing me down the hallway. I said, oh, no, no, sir. It's okay. I, I, I'm very experienced. I just want to see what it was like. You know, <clears throat> so the, te the way I teach, like I said, is very unconventional. I teach during a live stream, nine to four each and every day. I do free webinars. We do workshops. We, you know, I do end of day recaps. I really want to be as, throw as much knowledge and, and visual uh, ideas at you because these patterns that I'm teaching you repeat themselves. And the confidence, which is the third word, is because I'm showing you software that I spent nine years, close to nine years of my life building to be able to give to you the same charts I look at, the same charts that you look at, the same strategies I'm teaching on the Telestrator are the same charts that you can have at your fingertips, right? Imagine not having this, it's like flying an airplane or a car without any instruments, right? Can't do it, right? I always tell people, and I know I make a joke out of it, but it's a kind of a, like a friendly joke. We're all like doctors. We're looking at a chart. We're examining the chart. We're looking at the strategy. A doctor looks at it. Oh, you have a hairline fracture. You have a broken bone. You have this, you have that. A doctor can make determination by looking at the x-ray, the MRI, the CAT scan. We're looking at a chart and we're identifying the strategies that I have te that I teach each and every day that now is embedded in so many people. There's no greater joy in my life than during the day when people call out and say, hey, Steve, look at this beautiful pattern here. Like looking at the currency markets because they trade 24 hours a day. I walked in, I saw a phenomenal 10 strategies on the pairs that we look at, right? It doesn't make a difference. What most important thing is then patience to let the pattern set up and then to have the passion to really want to learn. The one thing I will tell you in trading futures, okay, is that there's no greater joy that when you see a great setup, a pattern develop, and then there's no greater joy than seeing the strategy and then executing it properly and understanding why it's going to happen, why what I'm teaching actually happens, right? So with that, let's just go. And um, so I wanted to give you like a little bit of a five, 10 minute uh, over, overview of the markets and, and the things that I, I feel are important and why this webinar is so important, right? So let's start. What are futures, right? So futures were designed for the agricultural um, farmers back in the 30s because, you know, they were farmers and, and cotton and soybeans and wheat and, and grains. And, and so those <clears throat> farmers needed to be able to then take their crop and corn and then basically then decide if there was going to be a drought or if it was going to be, you know, they could sell it and lock in, or if they needed to buy, you know, they would buy it 
the need because they needed to make deliveries. So the futures markets were really designed back then. And then obviously in the mid seventies and um, mid seventies, uh, uh, yeah, well, mid eighties actually, they started with index futures. So the futures markets gives you the ability, right? To have great leverage in trading, but also the ability to, what are you doing? You're betting on the future, right? You're betting on the future. Like you could buy Apple and you can hold Apple and Basically, you know, you're either investing or you're trading it. Futures, okay, and you're still betting on the future. If you're buying Apple, you want it to go up. If you're shorting Apple, you want it to go down. It's still, whatever you do, anytime you put the trade on, it's always looking outward towards the future based upon your decision of what you're doing. The futures market gives us the ability to bet on the future of where that index is going to go. So for example, a lot of people can't buy all 500 stocks in the S&P 500. They could do one of two things. They could buy the spiders, the underlying ETF, and they could just buy it and you know, hopefully that the index goes up or they can buy the, the futures contract for a lot less money, right? So the spiders are trading at 366, the S&P futures are trading at 3,700, okay? And guess what? It's a lot less money, a lot, lot less leverage by, doing, by buying the futures contract. So the futures market gives you a lot of leverage, also gives you a lot of great benefits in tax structure. For example, 60% you're taxed on long-term and 40% you're taxed on short-term. A lot of people don't know that. So again, the most important thing with regarding trading futures, you don't have to worry about the day trading rule, the $25,000 in your account, right? And a lot of people that are new didn't re don't realize that, right? So you really need to focus on what asset best fits you to trade. And I can't tell you how many people around the world, like I stated earlier, just want to learn about trading futures. You know, the one thing I'm going to tell you and taking a step back here, I can't tell you how many people say, well, I never traded futures before and I'm scared of them. Why? Why? So you learn. Okay, you learn. If I told you we can make money trading water, does that not resonate with you? If, so water is calmer because it's water versus trading futures and they, the volatility is there. Right, there's volatility in soybeans, pork bellies, crude oil, which is an animal sometimes, most of the time, right? 30 year bond futures. How about stocks? I've seen stocks, you know, like Apple and Microsoft, Nvidia, Facebook, Meta, right? They're just as volatile, right? So there's no difference in volatility when the markets are really going than trading a futures contract. So for me, Trading futures gives, if you think of it, you don't need that much money up, right? And I'm going to get into this in the next slide and explain the amount of capital that you may need, which is not really that much, to be able to achieve your goals that you can set each and every day, right? So if you want to trade, for example, Meta, 163 dollars and 74 cents currently from Friday's close. If you want to buy, let's say, and you want to trade it, you want to buy, you know, a thousand shares of Meta, that's $163,000 that you're going to need to have versus, okay, and then if you only have $25,000 in your account and you have four to one leverage, well, you can't do a thousand because you're $63,000 over the margin requirement. So mm -hmm. futures gives you the ability to really be able to learn the markets and learn it in a way that you don't have to have to be fearful of the markets, number one, because we have technology that I share with you. And two, I'm gonna teach you how to trade the right patterns. You know, just to give you an example, right? Mm -hmm. I, and I know this is a crazy analogy. so. When I would, 
I wanted to buy a motorcycle once. I, I've told people the story. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm going to go buy a motorcycle. A bunch of my friends said, go get a Suzuki, get a Kawasaki, you know, get a Honda, just learn. And then, you know, down the road, I said, are you crazy? I go in and I bought a Harley, right? Custom soft tail. I went for the biggest and the best, right? And that's what the futures markets are like, right? You go after the biggest and the best. You should have no fear, okay? Once you, this webinar is done, part of my live stream, you learn, right? And we go over all these different processes. And I'm telling you, I can, I'm doing this webinar because I feel if you follow this path, these sequences, I believe in my heart, or else I wouldn't be here, that you, with the work put in, asking the questions, practicing, learning, I believe, and trading the right patterns, the right setups, that repeat themselves on a daily basis, that you could achieve your goal for one, financial freedom, and to be able to help change your life. All right. Okay. So again, a futures market, okay, is basically exactly the definition here that I explained, right? Where you can then look at the market in many different ways. You look at the market in trading where investors can buy and sell futures contracts, okay? One party agrees to buy a given quantity of securities or commodities and take delivery on a certain date. When you're trading the markets, nobody's really doing that. Now, I mean, like the farmers, like I said, or the big oil producers will take delivery of crude oil. You know, like for example, I know I'm, I'm sounding a little crazy and funny, but during the, um, the mar March of 2020, when oil was negative $40 a barrel, negative 40, that meant that they were paying you to have oil shipped to you. I said to my kids, daddy's not filling up the pool this year. I'm, I'm going to try to buy, you know, I don't know, two barrels of oil, which is, you know, 20,000 gallons. I think it's like well, maybe one barrel of oil. It's like 20,000 gallons. I'm going to fill the pool up with oil because they were paying me to take delivery. But you, but the CFTC when, was not allowing people to have open positions. You're only a liquid, liquefying position. So basically that scenario was where I'd never seen it in my entire life where you actually were being paid if they allowed you to, to take physical delivery of oil. So basically what I'm teaching here is that a lot of, again, like I told you earlier, futures contracts in the early thirties were meant for the third party to be able we got bells here from uh, so uh, where the 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 third party was actually like if you're if you're a, a corn grower like I stated and you you have a great harvest and you and corns at 250 a bushel you'll just sell whatever amount of bushels that you have acreage sorry about the bells and then they would lock it in and then they would deliver based upon the time the contract came due, whether it was an August or a September or a July contract. Once that contract date came, the farmer then would have to sell that equal amount of bushels, the amount of contracts sold to lock it in. If there's a drought, for argument's sake, and they happen in the Midwest, right, that these farmers then would try to buy futures contracts, okay, to make that delivery. Now, because there's a drought, what would happen to the price of corn? Corn would go up, right? And then they would have to start scrambling and pay for it. And they could even lose because they may be selling corn at 3 330 a bushel, but they could be buying at 350 390 $4 a bushel just to make that delivery to that, to that uh, producer, right? So again, basically the futures markets okay, um, were, were really designed for that purpose. And then a lot of wise people and smart people decided to create index options, right? Commodity, uh, I'm sorry, index futures, commodity futures, right? 
financial futures like the 30 year bonds, uh, gold futures, silver futures, right? All right. Then futures on Forex, index futures, um, like I said. So if you look here, okay, the futures contracts, like I stated, could be index futures, stock futures, commodity futures, currency futures, interest rates futures, and or even volatility futures, right? So again, but what we focus here in our live stream each and every day, we look at index futures, the S&P and NASDAQ futures. We do have people who trade the Dow futures and the Russell futures, okay? We look at gold futures. People use my software, you trading silver futures. We look at oil futures and we look at the financial futures like the 30 year bonds. So these futures to me represent, again, the, the whole scope of the, of, the, of the markets. I don't wanna look at, if you're looking at the NASDAQ and S&P futures, to me, that's a lot. I have people who are now trained and who use the, my software in the, in the YMs, which is the Dow futures and the RTYs, which is the Russell futures, the silver futures. I know people who just trade silver using the software that have been with me for many, many years. But again, we focus primar primarily on our live stream on index futures on the S&P and NASDAQ futures. So again, it's really important to understand the movement on a futures market. I'm gonna get into that right now, right? So let's, we're, gonna, we're gonna take the S&P futures, for example, all right? So the S&P futures, okay, um, has two ways to trade. I actually was with the head of the CME on his birthday in Chicago, and he was so excited about coming out with the micro e-mini future. Now, the micro e-mini future is another product that the CME came out with because the CME had hundreds of thousands of people around the world using on the CME website was called a simulator. They were just paper trading. But the CME decided, you know, I want to try to get these people off the simulator and give them the ability to learn how to trade real money in real markets, but where it doesn't affect them, God forbid they lose. So they came out with a micro, micro e-mini, all right? And if the S&P futures moves one point, so right now, if the S&Ps went from 37 to 37.01, it's $5. If the S&Ps go from 3,700 to 37.06, you made $30 on one contract. So you can see here, basically, an E-mini, which is the next step. And I recommend, and I'm going to go over this, how people go from paper trading to micros to the S&P E-mini futures contracts. And there's there's reasons why you do this. And I'm gonna get into this uh, a little later in, in the webinar. But the most important thing, right, is to understand the importance. I'm just sticking to the S&P futures. You could look up like the NASDAQ futures. Okay, the NASDAQ futures moves one point, it's $20. The YMs, which is the Dow futures, the Russell futures, they all have different increments, right, gold, moves in uh, $10 increments, oil moves in penny increments, the 30 year bonds move in 64th, okay, uh, 30 seconds, sorry, 30 seconds, okay. So what you really need to understand and why I don't wanna complicate things, I wanna keep it as simple as possible. And looking at the S&P futures, right? If you take one S&P future, not the micros now, one S&P future, all right, is $12.50 per tick or $50 per handle. What the hell is a handle, right? A handle is if they, <coughs> that's what they called it out in Chicago when they were trading the big ones, the big S&P contracts in the open outcry days on the Florida CME. If the S&Ps go from uh, 3706 to 3705, they drop one handle. If the S&P futures drop from 3706 to 3703, they drop three handles, right? So 
a lot of times you'll hear me say the word handle, okay, in the live stream, because it's just so natural for me after close to 39 years in the industry. Remember, I don't teach the conventional way. I teach a very unconventional way, very high level, because I believe I don't want to waste your time. I want to be able to teach you at a high level and ask as many questions as you want during the, <coughs> during the Discord, right? During the chat period. And most, mostly everybody gets it like this because it's constant repetition, right? So for example, if you bought one micro at 3,700, right? And you sold one micro up two points or two handles, you have gained a gross amount of $10. Now it does seem like a lot, right? And then after fees, maybe you made about seven, right? Commissions and exchange fees. and But you don't need the $25,000 in your account to day trade like you need with stocks. If you have $1,000 in your account and your goal is to make $50 a day or $100 a day, it's a I believe with our methodologies, with our software, with me teaching the strategies, it could be obtained, it could be attained, right? So what you really want to be able to do is to understand that you get a lot of great leverage with trading futures. So when you're, and I'm going to get into margin in the next couple of slides. So if you bought one S&P future at 3,700, the big one now, the one up from the micro, and you sold it at 3,705, you made $50 times five is $250. Now, again, a lot of you who are on this know all this already, and I get it, but this, I have to cover all the DNAs from people who have never traded futures in their entire life to people who are very sophisticated, making good money trading with me in the live stream each and every day. But I have to do this because I want, it's, I want so many people in the, in the world to really understand how to trade futures and the understanding of it. You know, I'm not a, the type of guy that's gonna give you just some generic teachings during the day where you can go to Investopedia and look up all this nonsense, right? No, we're going to, teach you the right way throughout the day, the right strategies, the, the, the terminologies, understanding the charts, and it's constant, like I keep saying, it's constant repetition and visualization. So basically, this slide right here is, is really for the, it's just for the S&P futures. Again, I could have other slides for the NASDAQ futures, for the Russell, for gold, for silver, for oil, for the 30-year bonds, for the Dow futures. I'm just showing you an example here of what it costs, right? If you, what, if you were to make a profit on one S&P future and if you bought one micro, the difference, okay? So if you bought one micro and you sold it up three points or three handles, you made $15 gross. Again, not counting in exchange fees and not counting in the um, commission from your broker. All right. All right. The next thing I want everybody to realize is that there are three sessions in the world. There's a U.S. session, there's a Tokyo session, and then the European session. So futures trade from six o'clock Sunday night to, to five, five, five o'clock on Friday, they close, right? So they really trade, you know, almost six days a week, right? And they're closed from Friday night, all day sat in, they reopen again on, on Sunday. Um, so the great thing about futures trading is the fact that, yes, you could trade if you have some brokers, you know, you know post-market during the European, <coughs> during the Euro European session, you could trade the ETFs, you could trade various different stocks, but there's really no great liquidity. The one thing you got to be careful about when you're trading futures or any commodity or index future or any financial future during the Tokyo or European session is what? 
you've got to know the news coming out during those sessions. So you can be trading the S&P futures during the European session, as I have a lot of people from, uh, you know, from around the world that do. And guess what? They got to be concerned about is any news coming out in, in, you know, in, uh, in England on, on the GDP number, retail sales, consumer confidence, new home sales. You got to worry about all those different factors during those sessions, right? So again, there are three sessions, the US session, the Tokyo session, and then the European session, right? Okay, so again, we've gone now from a beginner aspect to understanding futures to really gaining. Now we're gonna start stepping it up a little bit, right? So the next important process is you have to have the right setup. I can't tell you how many people think they could just trade on a laptop. Now, you know, if you trade on a laptop, you can't have the right setup. Now, a lot of you, you know, there's two ways to trade. You could trade from your phone, okay? You could trade from your desktop. You could trade from your iPad. You could trade from a uh, laptop. I mean, I'm talking about the fact that you need, in my personal opinion, you need the right setup. And what's the right setup, right? You need to have the right amount of screens in front of you if you can, right? Because you want the charts up during the live market hours. Yes, I get it. Some of you are beginners. Some of you are in college. Some of you are working. Some of you, uh, you know, uh, could do this part time, full time. Some of you can only do this at night. I get that. This is not geared just to the person who sits home and is doing this full time, right? The right setup is if you're listening to me on either Silver Pro, Gold Pro, or Platinum Pro and you hear, and once you understand what I'm doing and you wanna start executing, whether you have an app that allows you to execute on your phone, if you go and you're executing at home, it's important to have the right setup. Obviously, if you're one of those individuals that has a full-time job and you know can't really trade like that because you're working or you're in school or whatever, you don't have the time, well, eventually, you're gonna need the right setup in order to really do this efficiently in the right way. Not to say you can't trade off to your phone during the live stream. And I have a lot of people who do that, by the way, a lot, a lot of people who just listen to my call. And I, when they hear me say, I know this pattern or this pattern you know, is a correlation pattern and this next pullback should be a nine, 10 buy which means a very strong buy on the work that we have right in front of us. And then they can start trading the markets. I have so many people who do that. So the right setup for me is, you know, having the right screens in front of you. But if you can't do that, then obviously you can do it at home and then go back and look at the, the trades that you're executing off your phone and then always have the charts up because then you'll be able to say, wow, and look at it. Well, I understand what Steve's teaching now. I can see it visually. To be able to trade the S&P futures without having the charts, it, it, it's, it's, it's really something that, and if you have them at home, then you can always go back and relate and then understand it because eventually, like I had so many people that say to me, I want to quit my job because I, I'm doing so well. And I can't give that recommendation. I can't give recommendations, period. But I just think that by understanding the strategies, the patterns, the psychology and mindset of what we're teaching here, I believe everybody can do extremely well. Now, with that being said, so for me, having the right setup, now I have 39 screens here. I don't expect everybody to have 39 screens in their home, okay? I have 39 screens because I, I'm being, was given a gift and I can see things like this and I'm being able to call the market, market direction. So I'm actually doing the work for you because you may not have the ability to have, you know, six screens, four screens, maybe we only have two screens, but at least I'm giving, I'm giving you 
the idea through the Telestrator. I'm teaching you through the Telestrator. I'm explaining to you what's going on, why this pattern should work out, why we have a cell divergence, why we have a correlation, why we have a disconnect. And I'm going to get into all that in, in the next couple of slides. So having the right setup, okay, even if you're trading from your home, you should have the charts uploaded at home, okay, to be able then to go back and look at why at 11, 11 20 in the morning i was calling a buy pattern off the five minute time frame after they correlated right and you go back and you say okay i i bought these three micros i bought these four micros i bought three minis and bam they ran five six seven points i just made myself 350 400 500 dollars on that trade right so again the right setup Okay, and I have people who just listen all day long because they're getting acclimated to what? The terminology, the terms, right? The, 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 why I'm calling these strategies out, why it's important to listen. As my father once said to me, one of the greatest gifts in life is the ability to listen, right? So having the right setup eventually comes in time. I know people who, have two screens and now have six screens who are now you know they see the importance of how i'm looking at the markets and why it's important to have that many screens open at any given time if you're able to sit in front of a desktop each and every day right so again that to me is something that you know you got to be able to do it right and again if you're able to trade from your phone great Okay, and have the charts at home so you can always go back and review as well. All right, so the next um, slide here is some, so many people are asking me about, I mean, literally, this is probably was the icing on the cake, you know, why I wanted to do this uh, webinar. So this is what's called a price ladder, right? So, so many people don't really understand what this represents and a lot of you do. So be patient with me here, okay? Again, for the people who wanna learn and people who are beginners, you, you can't trade futures contracts without this, right? So this is a price ladder. Um, this is from, uh, I believe from Trading Technologies, but TradeStation has it. E-Trade has it, um, Trade of Eight has it, all the big introducing brokers have it, Schwab has it, they all have them. Uh, RJ O'Brien has it, uh, CQG, okay? All the big firms have it. And this gives you the ability, okay, to put orders in the market. The left side here is the buy orders. You can see the, um, the orange right here or the pink, I think it is. It's the bid, the highest bid, and here is the offer. So right here, whatever this is, I can't read it, but it's trading two, this is just a, a, a static example. Uh, so um, 2138.75, let's just say it's the S&Ps, right? So it's uh, 38, uh, so it's, um, yeah, 38 and three quarter bid offered at 39. So these are the bids and these are the offers. And you can see to the left here, right here, is how many contracts are offered by sellers on each price point. And these are buyers trying to buy on these price points. Now, it's important to understand that how to execute with this. And this is why I go back and I'm going to teach you going forward in this webinar why it's super important to understand how to trade the market and why you need to go and paper trade first, especially if you're a beginner or someone new, you take get live market data on your simulator, which is a practice account. And you gotta be able to learn how to put orders in, cancel orders, raise your stops, put your offers out, put your bids in as you get executed, Put your stop in place as you're, and then you want to decide where you want to sell them. You put them up 
on the way up. As we have a joke in our live stream each and every day, hand, when you're starting to put a position on or buying and or selling, buying to go buy them to go long the market where you hopefully they go higher or short the market where you hopefully they're going to drop. We always have a saying, hand on the mouse. Hand on the mouse. You cannot trade futures markets and just sit there, put your bids in, put your stop in and keep your arms folded. I've seen at times our trades last anywhere from one minute to 40 minutes on a five minute time frame, one minute to 24 minutes on a three minute. There are times, sometimes on a phenomenal pattern that we'll call, bam, they'll run 20 points or 20 handles in less than five minutes. And people are like, whoa, what just happened? Well, <coughs> you better make sure that you have your offers out there. You'll see it run 20 and drop 10. That's how fast they go at times. Just now we're talking here. Within one bar here, the S&P futures just right now during live markets right now, just ran six handles from low to high just in this one bar. That's how fast it is. So if you bought S&Ps at 01 at 99, 3699, bam, they're 03, 04, 05 right now. You've got to be able to have your offers out there, right? And we're going to get into scaling in and scaling out later, okay? And actually there is a 24, 25 minute video that will be sent to you at the end of this webinar, okay? Because I didn't want to run it during, but any everyone here will have access to that um, to that video, how we scale and scale out of trade. So this ladder right here is really important. It takes time to learn how to put your orders in, <coughs> depending on your account size, where you want to put your bids in. Maybe you want to buy some here at 38 and three quarters. Maybe you want to buy more here at 37 and three quarters. Maybe you want to buy more here at 36 and three quarters. Or maybe you buy 38 and three quarters, you go down to 36 and three quarters. If you're short, maybe you want to offer some here at 39 and a half. Okay, maybe you want to offer more at 40, uh, at 40 and a half or 41 and a half, right? So this ladder gives you the ability to go click, click, right? I named a couple of people in our live channel, click, click, right? As a, you know, personality, we're, we're, we're trying to, be really personable with people and, and, and we're trying to make this as fun as possible at times. So I say, okay, click, click, there you go. Boom, you put the orders in, click, 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 click. You may want to put two bids in, three bids in, four bids in, depending on your account size. Remember, you have to have your stops in place once the orders go in. In case news comes out, bam, they drop and then you get stopped out, but that's only if news happens, right? A lot of, most of the time. Right, so this ladder here explains all the different types of sequences, the amount, the quantity that you're able to choose. You wanna trade a one lot, a five lot, a 10 lot, a 50, a hundred, you wanna clear, okay? You wanna be able to see the, 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 the defaults, you're set at one. So if you're trading one contract, every time you go click, 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 you'll see one, 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 that you're basically, you know, and I would say that probably every ladder system that I've seen has a liquid, liquidate uh, button, I mean, boom, sell all, right? Um, so again, this is just a, a price ladder from Trading Technologies. And they're, they're you know, they have different uh, uh, packages, but most of the firms that we talk about, which are in the webinar, which I get to, will have their own trading ladder. But it's important really to understand how to execute and why this is important. I mean, for example, like a company like TradeStation has this ladder system to trade stocks with, right? Some brokers have where you have to type it out, which in markets like today are very difficult because of the fact of the, the volatility in the market. Um, some, people, some firms have hotkeys. I personally traded uh, beginning by typing orders in before the ladder system came out. Then I went right into the ladder system on trading uh, stocks and futures markets, right? So again, this is the real importance of understanding 
how to use this technology for execution in trading the futures market. All right. So the next key point that is really super important, and I must have spoke to dozens and dozens of people over the weekend, is choosing the right broker for futures. And these are a list of some of them, right? Interactive Broker, Ninja, Optimus, Trade of A, Trade Station, GFF, TD Ameritrade. Now, all of them have their own ladder system, right? From the prior slide. But every firm is different because of the margin requirements. Interactive Broker, I know has a high margin requirement. Now what's a margin, right? Ninja has, since Ninja's a, now a, a, a broker dealer, an introducing broker, Optimus Future is a, is a uh, introducing broker. Trade of Eight was acquired by Ninja. Uh, Trade Station is a member firm. GFF is an introducing broker. TD Ameritrade is a member is a member firm. Member firm does stocks, futures, options. There's a whole gamut of assets where GFF and Optimus Futures um, and and uh, well, Trade of Eight used to be just where they just were were just just trade futures contracts. So, for example, I was talking to some people, and Trade Station. If you're trading one S and P future, I believe that their margin is nineteen hundred dollars per contract. So, if you have ten thousand dollars in your account, the most you can do, okay, is five contracts in the S and P futures. If you want to trade a micro. I believe the margin requirement at Trade Station is five hundred dollars. Now, to some people, that's great. They want the higher margin. That's fine, right? So, if you traded ten micros, that's five thousand dollars of the ten thousand dollars that you have in your account. It's just margin. But if you look at like Optimus Futures, Trade of Eight, GFF. They have lower margin, and I think Ninja might too. I'm I, I'm not sure, but they have like for example those three: Optimus, Trade of Eight, and GFF. For argument's sake, and there's so many more. Okay, their margin requirements are five hundred dollars per contract for the S and P futures. So if you did ten S and P futures, right, it's five thousand dollars. If you did a micro, it's fifty dollars per contract. So you could do 10 micros on the S&P futures for Optimus futures and it'd be $500. Where TradeStation, I believe it's $500. So it's 5,000. If you go from 500 to 5,000, a lot of people don't have that money. Some people open the accounts with two, three, four, five thousand dollars 5,000. Some open up with 10, 50, 100,000. Everybody's different. But for those of you who I spoke to over the weekend, there's like, well, you know, only have like $4,000 in my account, 5,000, but I really want to learn. Then you have to learn and you have to switch to a broker that can accommodate you because you go from paper trading again to micros, right? To the big ones, you want low margin. And the firms, I just, again, I don't know what Ninjas is. Um, I know that, um, uh, let's see, TD Ameritrade, I heard from somebody, I don't know if it's true or not, I didn't do the research, uh, I think it was twelve dollars or $15,000 for one, one S&P contract. Uh, and again, they have the right as a firm during high volatile times to raise the margin, okay? And uh, I believe that Optimus Futures, GFF, and Trade of Eight pretty much keep the, the margin even during volatile, volatile times the same, right? So again, choosing the right broker is very, very important to the amount of money that you want to open an account to trade because you can't go, right, open up an, an account at TradeStation for $2,000 and buy one S&P future at $1,900. God forbid the trade goes against you by $100, you're going to get a liquidation, boom, buy TradeStation, 
you'll have no margin to buy more, more than one contract. And like I tell people, what we emphasize here is you cannot do single lot entry. What's a single lot entry? You can't buy something and want to drop $4, okay, and not buy more if we're looking to buy in that pattern, in that range, which I'll go over later, right? It happened on Friday, somebody bought a, a contract at 96, watched it go down, right? Um, you know, 10, and then sold it, right? And then rallied, you know, 30, right? So it was in the, within the range, but then the pattern was beautiful pattern. It pulled in a little deeper than we had liked, okay? It didn't get stopped out, okay? And then it shot up like 25 or 30 points from that point on. So um, to do single lot entries, so now, for example, um, if that person only had $2,000 and he was at trade station, you would only be able to buy one contract. However, if that person was at trade station and you're, you know that you're now at $500 margin for a micro, then you could do three lot entries. But if you're at Optimus Futures, GFF, and a trade of eight, right? I don't know interactive brokers, I think they're just equal to trade station. Now you could buy five, six, seven lots, 10 lots on the micros, right? 10 lots on the micros, like I said, with $500 on the S&P Futures, if you have $3,000 in your account, you could easily buy four contracts without going over margin on with the firms I just mentioned. So you have to find the right broker that fits your DNA. And that's why it's important that I mention this here and now, all right? Okay. So I tell people that there are four parts. There are four parts to what we do each and every day. And I'm gonna go over parts one and two, but three and four, I have my own terminology. Terminologies that you've never heard before, right? Double, double blues, correlations, disconnects. So I have a list of them right here, okay? And these are yours to understand. And I never deviate from these words or these phrases each and every day. I say the same thing over and over again. You think like ever see the movie Groundhog Day where Bill Murray li lives the same day over and over and over and over again, right? Well, guess what? That's what we do. I get it so embedded in your brain that you just know exactly when you see it, you know exactly what I'm saying. If you think you're going to get this in, the, in three days, you're crazy, I'm telling you right now. If you put the work in, you'll get it within 10 days. If you apply yourself, come to the live stream, in and out, listen, watch, learn, you'll get this. I don't make it hard. You like the passion that I have, you have to have the same passion to want to learn, the same passion to want to achieve, to be able to be great in trading the futures markets. So here are all the different terminologies that we have, right? Now, alongside the terminologies, also we have strategies, right? So what do we have? What do we look at? We look for trends. We look for buy and sell reversals. We look for buy and sell divergences. But guess what? Again, I don't make it hard. You can't just have a trend up and or down without having buy and sell divergences. You can't have a buy reversal or a sell reversal without having buy and sell divergences as well. So one trends always has to have number three, buy and sell divergences with you. Two, buy and, buy and or sell reversals, which means we're down in the morning, we reverse up. We're up in the morning, we're down, or up in the afternoon and we reverse in the afternoon down. But then you'll get buy and sell divergences right after that. And I've told this to people since the beginning of me doing this. If you can master the art of divergences, which we try to achieve each and every day, you have mastered the art of trading because divergences are significantly powerful trading opportunities. If you can identify it, then guess what? 
you've mastered the art of trading, in my opinion. So you have your terminologies here. They're probably 95% of what I say outside of all the crazy antics that I say during the day. But then now coming to the live stream, you'll, you'll see the buy reversals. You'll see the sell reversals. You'll see the diversion strategies. You'll see the correlation strategies. You'll see the disconnect strategies, right? And again, we don't make it hard. We do not make it hard. So again, let me go now into a strategy that we call a correlation strategy. So remember, the S&P futures or the index futures and commodity futures and financial tr futures trade nearly 24 hours in a day, right? From again, from Sunday to Friday, right? The way I look at the stocks, okay, during the US session, I look at the stock market from 9.30 to 4. My software, I don't plug in pre-market or post-market data. I only look from 9.30 to 4. My research has shown me that when you, when they correlate, right? So for example, when the S&P futures correlate, right? With the underlying ETF, you better be going in that direction. So this example here is a strategy using my software of a buy correlation. So what am I, what am I looking at here, right? I'm looking at the fact that, again, I look at the 15 minute time frame, look at the five minute time frame. I also look at the three minute time frame on a separate chart. And at times I do look at the 30 minute and the hourly. So when it comes to the index futures, <coughs> I do look at five different time frames. But when it comes to correlation uh, strategies, I look at both the 15 minute and the five minute. If you see here, and I'm gonna go over all this, right? Indicator four is my own predictive analytics, right? My predictive analytics study, right? And you can see here, blue over orange meant that now we have a reversal in the trend. That means we're getting a buy reversal, but not only do we get a buy reversal on the 15 minute time frame, it also correlated with the five minute time frame. So the 15 minute time frame has now correlated to a buy with the five. Okay, stop right there. Now I go to the next slide. You can see here at 215. So we got the buy reversal here at 115. An hour later, the underlying ETF, the spiders, we got the buy reversal. So now the underlying ETF not only correlated right here on the 15 minute time frame with the five minute time frame, it also correlated with the S&P futures. So you'll hear me say this as a double, double blue buy, which is in the terminology sheet, but 95% of the time you'll hear me say, guess what? S, S spider is just correlated with the S&P futures. We're gonna use the smaller time frame, the five minute, let's look for pullback to get long. I wrote this strategy. I've taught this to the biggest and the best hedge fund guys, okay? And now I want to teach all of you. So now the five minute time frame, we got this beautiful pullback on my oscillator three, which is my overbought oversold oscillator. The S&P futures pulled in right here to, to, the, um, to the 42, uh, maybe 45 level, it looks like here. 42, 45 and a half. And then the trades, like I told you, last anywhere from one to eight bars. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now eight, I'm not, I'm not counting eight. I'm usually out between five and six, okay, on a great pattern like this, especially I knew this pattern was going to make a new high, okay? So the S&P futures ran almost 40 points here. So if you held one contract, that's $2,000. Now, I'm not saying this happens every single day, but the volatility is there. 
where we have multiple trades. Okay, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal strategy. So now you'll hear me saying during the live stream that the spiders on the S and P futures just correlated with the with the with the futures market or the continuous contract, which is another terminology that we use for the futures market. We're going to look for the first pullback on the five minute time frame. We got the deep oversold, bam, right back up. Now, you think I'm just showing this to you to make it look good or look pretty and, oh, well, this is just a perfect scenario. No, these strategies that I'm teaching, okay, and I'll get more in depth why this strategy was going to make a new high. And I can say, well, you know, indicator one, the MACDs are crossing up from below the pivot, which gives it even more power than if the MACDs were crossing up from above the pivot. And again, I don't want to complicate you on this webinar. Right. So that's why so many videos I produce video after video after video. And I put it into our gold package, into our platinum package, because, again, it's constant repetition. Right. But here is a beautiful monster pattern. Last Friday, we got a monster sell at 945. We got the first bounce to get short. What's a bounce? That meant that the market rallied. We get right into our range to get short. S&P futures drop from 93 down to 58. Monster short, monster short, okay? So again, all you really need to do is to trade four to six times a day or even two to four times. I have people say, hey, when I make my five handles, five points, I'm done for the day. That's great. You set goals for yourself like I did. My goal, right? was to make $100 a day after I met the guy on the COMEX who told me he was going to make a hundred when he was a clerk making $100 a day. He just got married. He was having a baby. He was a local in the gold pit looking up towards everybody in the crowd and the open outcry days. And his goal was to make $100 a day or lose 100 and stop. And he set a one month goal for himself. Well, guess what I did? I said, I'm not waiting no freaking month. I'm gonna make hundred dollars a day every week. And then next week I'm gonna to go to 200, then 300, then 400, then 500, then 600 and exponentially keep growing. And I achieved that. I achieved that. I achieved that. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> every day, my goal was to leave in the green. Okay. To leave in the green. So this is a correlation strategy, again, using my software. And here you can see the, the, the uh, NASDAQ, the Qs, okay? You got the buy reversal here at 230. And the NASDAQ futures went positive the exact same time as the S&P futures. So now here's the pullback. This is a buy divergence here. Okay, even though the algorithm went negative, this is a buy divergence versus a correlation, right? So this is another strategy, but the NASDAQ futures, beautiful setup. You can see what this thing did. This thing exploded, the Qs, right? They rallied almost two points, uh, $2. That's a monster move in the NASDAQ. So again, using the software, I was able to do what here? Identify market direction, Identify strategy, right? Be on the, like I said, identify the market direction, be on the right side of the market. I mean, there's no way in, in God's creation I'm selling S&P futures here. Can you imagine the guy who sold 4245s and he's now trading at 4270, 4280? Forget it. So we want consistency. We want to be on the right side of the market. We want to be able to understand why this strategy is powerful because the math on both the underlying etf which is an spy and the math on the s p futures which trades longer because it has more tick data because it trades nearly 24 hours a day correlated and when they correlate like this especially when these macd's are crossing up from you see me circle it from below the pivot you guys are 93%, 94% of the time that you're going to make a new high after this pullback. And right here was the new high. This is a strategy. Now, I, 
not going to spend five hours going over every strategy we have. That's what the live channel is about. And I'm telling you, I got people in the in the Discord blasting out, hey, Steve, look at, look at the buy reversal in the video. Look at the sell divergence in Apple. Look at the buy reversal in Microsoft. Yeah, right? Look at the sell divergence on, 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 on the euro dollar. Okay, I, I know this is a futures webinar, but I'm just telling you the, the, the way people are getting it and they're seeing it. You cannot trade the markets without having this technology. Okay? All right. So again, understanding this here, okay? So where do you get these charts that I have, right? On TradeEZ, you go on my TradeEZ site, you go to SK Overlay, and they're available on Ninja, TradingView, TradeStation, and Sigma360. Now, it is important, okay, that when you're trading futures markets, you definitely need the underlying ETF especially during the U.S. session. <coughs> TradeStation and TradingView offer that. Ninja, I heard, offers it, but somehow I heard that it was a little complicated how to get the market data for equities. I heard some people, they, it's not a problem. Some people say it's a problem. I'm just being transparent. Sigma 360, you just get the equity, the, the futures data. Now, that's great if you want to trade the Tokyo or European session. Okay, so again, the Sigma 360 platform just offers just the futures markets, but I'm giving you the option. But if you're going to trade the U.S. session, it is imperative to have the underlying data, right? If you're setting up your charts the right way, you want the spiders, you want the spider chart on the 5 and the 15, you want the S&P futures, the futures market side by side. So you can see how these correlations I just showed you um, set up. Okay. All right. So I want to talk to you because I can't tell you, this is so important, the risk management, right? To be able to really have the discipline. If I tell you this week, I must have heard from at least a half a dozen people. Okay. People I've come to know and uh, I'm just I'm not, never mentioned name or anything like that, but how they're trading without stops. You cannot trade the market without stops. Can you get in a car with your five-year-old son and drive on a highway without a brakes? That's what it's like. Could you be that irresponsible to get in a car with someone that you love, drive from here to there, side roads, highway, back on the side, without braking? How are you going to come to a red light? That's what this is like. You're, you're being irresponsible by trading the markets without having stops. Stop orders protect you, preservation of capital in case a trade goes against you. You don't know. We're not bigger than the market. If I knew the numbers to the Powerball, I wouldn't be here, right? Do I know that, you know, at 11.05, that some news is going to come out that, that could rever reverse? One time I was long, I think 150 or 100 S&P futures, right? It was, I was up good money. It was ticking where I was going to try to sell them. I had my stop in place. And then, bam, one o'clock. Boom. I went from a good, great gain to losing, right? $20,000, $25,000. Why? Because news came out that... Google's earnings were released at one o'clock that day when they were supposed to be released at five o'clock. They, they were leaked early or the accounting firm. Now, what am I going to do? Go sue the accounting firm that they came out at one o'clock? I, 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 I was so livid, I threw a chair, right? And so, but I had preservation. I locked, okay, I took my loss. It was out of my, but did I know that was going to happen? If I didn't have it, Okay, they bounced a little bit, then dropped even more. So thank God I had my stop in place. If you're talking to a professional who, if I'm willing to adhere to stops, you as a beginner, novice, someone who's learning, should even want to put stops in for preservation of capital. It's, it's imperative to have this. I can't even begin 
to tell you the importance of this, okay? So please, please don't give me an aneurysm, all right? Don't give me a heart attack. I talked to, well, I didn't have my stop in place, okay? I had someone loving and endearing person that I know watch the S&P futures because they did not put a stop in on their short, watch a rally 400, about 400 points against them. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Thank God, thank God, thank God the market dropped. Okay, thank God the market dropped. <sighs> gotta trade with stops. You gotta trade with stops. Okay, please, stop orders, preservation of capital, okay? You need to have stops, okay? Because if you don't have stops, it's just gonna really destroy you and you, you could blow up your account. Because without stops, it really could be detrimental. And why, why risk the money to that, to that level? All right. So you hear me say over and over to all of you during the live stream, people like come to me, okay, hey, I have a methodology here. You open up a broker, a brokerage account, right, with one of the firms or any of the firm, E-Trade, Schwab, whoever, you gotta do your due diligence. Find the right margin that fits your needs, right? And then, what do I tell you the next steps are? Your paper trade. For those of you who are beginners, you got to learn how to put the orders on, on the ladder. You got to be able to learn how to, to scale in, which again, at the end of the day, you're going to get two additional pieces of uh, links. One of core, a, a phenomenal correlation, right? To really understand the strategy. And again, you'll see more of these as you come into the live stream and you'll see how these correlation strategies really are so powerful, up and or down. And then the other link you're gonna be getting uh, at the end of this, because it's really important. It's a 24 minute video, take your time, listen. Uh, how is, we have what's called a range. We have a buy range or a sell range to go short. And then we look for the ability, how to scale in, how to scale out. Because everybody's asking me for that one as well. All right, so I, I produced a 24 minute video, Albert and myself, and that is a, a bonus to you to be able to watch. Not, not only will you get this webinar, you'll also have the ability to have that scaling in and that correlation video as well. But now let's take this next slide here, paper trading, right? You wanna be able, here's the pros and cons. Imagine just opening an account, funding it, and bam, just start trading. Are you crazy? especially if you're new, especially if you're a beginner? No. Now, yeah, I was crazy. I had $3,000. I went right into the options market like a, like a hoople, right? But that's not what this is about. This is about one thing and one thing only, right? This is about learning how to be able to paper trade. You get a fund, you get, you fund an account, you ask the broker, introducing broker or member firm, Hey, I want live market data for my simulator and they'll, they'll accommodate you. <coughs> and then, and then you want to be able to start practicing on the ladder, paper trading. Like I, a couple of people this week said, Hey, CV, I made $500 every single day. I made a thousand dollars a day. Great. When do you think I'm ready? Uh, 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 I can't tell you that. You have to be ready yourself to start trading real money. Remember, I get it. With paper money, it's a lot different than trading your own money. Why? Because of your emotions are the worst thing you can have when you're trading. You can't have emotions when you're trading. 
I swear to you, I'm telling you this. I'm not that I'm, I'm like immune from this or I used to come in every single day and not even think about anything. I never read the paper. I just have my bowl of cereal, my cup of coffee. I rinsed out my bowl. I rinsed out my mug and I sat in my chair and boom, I just started. I never thought, as the old saying is, when you think you stink, right? You got to just be natural in your approach. And paper trading gives you that confidence of being able to practice, 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 putting orders in, scaling, uh, being able to put the orders in, clicking, watch them get executed. Now put your offers out, raise your stops, which is now if you're, which you'll see in the scaling, uh, the scaling in and out video. Okay. But paper trading is the most important step. It's like leaning a ladder against the house. There are 10 steps. You want to change that light bulb. You're not going to take a 20 a step run and try to leap to get to the eight step to get to that ladder uh, to change that light bulb. You lean the ladder against the house. You take the first step, the second step, the third step, the fourth step, ultimately up to the seventh step where you can reach eight step where you can reach and get that light bulb and you can change that light bulb. This is the same process. You want to be able to have the sequence of events. You paper trade, then you go to micros, and then you go into the big ones. Now, some people this week said to me, CV, I, I get it, but I traded futures before. Great. I can't tell you what to do. This is the way I would do it, right? However, they said, you know what? I like what you're saying. Guess what? I'm going to go from paper trading to the big ones. That's great. If that's what you want to do, then do it because you have some experience in the futures markets. But guess what? I can't, I can only tell you as, an, as a, a coach, mentor, that this is a process that I would take, right? So what's the next thing that we look at here, okay? Is to be able to scale in and scale out of a trade, okay? Again, there is a 24 minute video that will be sent to you at the end of this webinar alongside this webinar because it's recorded and everybody will get a copy of it. Okay. So for example, let's say you bought an S&P future. Okay. Okay. And you're, again, you can see here, you're buying one, you're buying one here. Okay. You're buying one here. You're buying another one here. Okay. You're able to scale in and scale out of a trade. Okay. So now you have your stop in place, right? You're bought here, you're bought here. Okay. It's trading up. Okay. You raise your stops along the way. And here you, you as it's trading upward. So if I give a range, look to buy S and P's at um, right here, 131. I'm just, this is just an example down to 130, a 10 point range. You may say, okay, I'm going to go every three points. You may go every point. You may go every two points, every two and a half points. You may say, I'm going to go three in. I'm going to go every three points, and maybe I only get filled on two. You may say, I'm going to buy one here, right, at 131. I'm going to buy two more at 130.08. Uh, uh, I'm going to buy three more at 130.06. I'm going to buy four more at 130.40. And use my use a stop at one two nine five or one two nine zero. Everybody has different ways of doing it. There's no right and there's no wrong. But again, watch this video that I'm that I worked with Albert on, and this I feel will open your eyes on how we look to scale in and scale out of a trade, whether you're long and or short. All right. So again, very big, because if you hear me say a range, that means I'm looking based upon the strategy, okay? So if you go back here, for example, on the S&P futures right here, okay? Let's say, for example, my range on the S&Ps were 42.48 down to 42.38. So I gave a 10 point or a 10 handle range to get long on this strategy. So let's say you bought 48s, you bought 46 is the low is 45 and a half, right? Let's say, you know, you bought two entries. You went every two. 
But on this strategy, some people I know probably bought every handle. But let's just say you bought two entries, right? So now your average price is you long two contracts at 42.47. 48.46, your average price is 47. You bought two contracts. It trades to 50. Maybe you sell one. You raise your stop to 47. Now it goes to 52.53. You raise your stop to 51. Or you sell them, you, or you sell them. It goes to 55, 56. You raise the stop to 53, 54, or you just kick them out. Either way, now you're playing with the house's money. Now you now you're, you know, now you're just in la la land. Everything is working great. Okay, you're up good money. You probably met your target for the day already, which I gotta tell you, there's no greater joy when I see the Discord blows up and say, I met my target for the, to the day. I'm stopping right? I'll, un I'll upgrade my target next week. And guess what? Now I'm paper trading. Oh my God. My heart stops when I hear that, right? My heart stops when I hear that. So again, maybe on this pattern here, you would only gotten filled twice. There are some times when a pattern that we're calling maybe gets filled three, four times. Maybe there's times like on Friday, we only got filled once, I think three times the, the, the price action only entered into our range once and then ripped, you know, five or 10. Even if you bought one contract and it, on a micro and it ran, let's just say five points is $25 gross. But if you bought one S&P future, you made $250 gross, right? So again, it's really important, like I said, to understand the scaling in and the scaling out process, right? And again, that video will be given to you. I can't emphasize again, like I keep saying to everybody about using stops, preservation of capital. You got to be able to learn how to apply stops. If I hear one more person that tells me that they're trading without using stops, I'm just going to put my head in a microwave. I can't take it. You can't do this and be so irresponsible to yourself. You've worked hard enough to save the money to be able to do this now trade. Again, I don't want to keep repeating myself. It's like driving a car with having brakes on. You just can't do it. And that's all I'm going to have to say about that. All right. So with that, <clears throat> this concludes the webinar. As you know, I'm there for everybody. I give out my personal cell phone from around the world. 914-500-7484. I can't tell you how many times my phone blows up with text messages from people all around the world. I do get to everybody. I know it may not seem scalable, but on Sunday, somebody or Saturday, somebody text me. I call them right back. I had, believe it or not, 15 minutes of spare time. I said, I can't believe you're calling me back. I said, why? Why not? I'm here. If I had given my phone number, I'm not just giving it to a marketing company. I'm here to help you. I want you here. You're reaching out to me. Well, I'm here to help you. All right. So I think there's one question here <coughs> from Miles. Um, what are the difficulties for trading futures when the market is not volatile? Um, well, we there are times when the markets are very, very slow, Miles. But the bottom line is, is that the strategies will repeat themselves, and we wait for the right strategies to kick in. Right. Right. Right now. We're on Monday on a, on a national holiday, and the S&P futures are trading live, as is the NASDAQ, as is oil, as is the 30-year bonds, as in gold. And I can't tell you, yes, the volume may not be there, okay? The volume right now is just on the S&P futures, very, very, what are they? They're not even a couple hundred, okay? And probably just in this one-hour time period, there were probably three great, one, one, two, three, four, four great strategies just in this one hour, um, you know, on the, on the S&P futures, believe it or not, on a slow, slow day. When I say kicking them out, Ben, that means exit. Hey, like I know, for example, there was a time last week, the, probably the first time I said this, hey, S&Ps are getting up here, kick them out. I, I would look to kick them out. Kick them out means sell them. Now, that's the first time I said kick them out, 
and I almost got crucified for it because it was a new term. It just came out of nowhere, okay? Um, it's something I used to say when I was, I would say, Ernie, kick them out, you know, sell my compact, kick them out like that, right? And, but I went right a minute late, not even 10 seconds later, I said, I would look to sell them here. So then I had to explain what kicking them out is, okay? So I hope you understand that. Absolutely, FT. I, if you're a beginner, okay, like right now, I would have had a short at 09 on the S&Ps. They just dropped two. I would have said, look to cover. You would have made a hundred bucks on a big one. So what? But if you're just beginning to learn, you made $10. You do that over and over again. And then you start increasing the micros. Eventually, I believe that you'll really have great results. All right. So I hope I answered these three questions. Um, let's see in the chat. Oh my Lord. Um, there's a hundred. I don't even know where to begin. Okay. Um, all right. Good morning, all. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Uh, does anybody have any questions here? I mean, I, there's a chat going on, but I don't see really uh, any. I only have three questions here. Hey, Steve. Um, maybe, yeah, hey. yeah, if you go down to the, scroll down to the bottom of the chat, there's more meteor questions there um, for you. I don't see it. Albert, you want to help me here? I'll see it. Go right down the end and then go back. I, I only see three, Ashlyn, here. Yeah. Yeah, they're in the Q&A. I think a lot of people are putting them in the chat as well for you. Yeah. Can we go to chat? Yeah. Yes. yeah, please. Thank you. Oh, I see there's a major difference between, between the Platinum and the Pro. Can you? Yeah, so the Platinum Pro is a nanosecond uh, company called Millicast, where you can actually hear me speak like, like you're standing right next to me, right? The lower price Platinum uh, is a YouTube and it's anywhere between three and five or eight seconds delay, depending on the YouTube servers. So I think the better of the two is a Platinum Pro, right? Because you also can get the uh, audio on your, on your phones as well, okay? So I uh, hope I, what is the best way to learn the layout and, uh, and the indicators? Great question. One, getting the charts, whether it's TradingView, TradeStation, or Ninja, okay? And then two, coming to the live channel and learning the strategies and learning the uh, learning the charts. Actually, I want to. There's another segment here that I want to do. Can you ask Joe if I could uh, yeah. get the charts up here? Um, let's see, uh, let's see here. One more, Steve. Regarding the question, when you refer to the five and the fifteen three higher, are we looking at a time frame in history when you? So I'm, I'm looking at time frames, a three minute, a five minute and a 15 minute time frame. Okay, what does cover mean? That's a great one. Cover means if you're short, I would look to cover the short. You're looking to cover the short, okay? If you're long, if you own it, I would be looking to sell. So I don't say if you're long, look to cover the long. When you're short, let's say you're short S&P futures at 3709, now it's trading 3706. I would say I would look to cover the short here at 37.06. Uh, let me see if there's a couple more. Steve, you teach equity on small cap. I mean, you as a mentor. Um, I look at the same 39 names each and every day, but you, once you learn the strategies and understand the charts, you can apply it on uh, the strategies and understanding the, 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 uh, the charts on the uh, small caps as well, all right? So I look at the big names like Boeing, Goldman, NVIDIA, Facebook, uh, Meta, Amazon, uh, all four ETFs, Apple, uh, Roku, Square, uh, AMD, Micron, uh, you know, we, the SQQQs, the SDSs, the TZAs, uh, JP Morgan, Oxy, OXY, Goldman, Procter & Gamble. So I look at the same, uh, same type of uh, names over and over again. But once you learn what I do, it could be applied in the small caps as well. What uh, video that futures are favorite type of trading? Can you explain why this has been an advantage over stocks and options? Well, again, the reason why I like futures is because of the fact that, you know, you only have four price points, right? On the ladder, you have, well, even a quarter, a half, three quarters in the figure. So really, you know, if figure to figure between the two figures, let's say from 06 to 07, you have, 36 and a quarter, 36 and a half, 36 and three quarters in the figure. Whereas trading stocks, 
you have 100 price points through the decimalization, right? Um, and options as well. So you, I like the futures markets because of the fact that you have less price points. Um, okay, so I hope I answered that question. You mentioned in an old video that futures are your favorite type of trading. Can you explain? I just, I hope I explained that. Um, when are you doing options? So basically, as far as options are concerned, so I feel it's very difficult to trade options unless we get big buy and sell reversals in the market. Or if you want to trade, when we get the correlation strategies, index, index options, and you know, at the money calls or puts, because I, 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 since I've been doing this, I can't tell you how many people have told me how much money they've lost intraday trading options. And again, I don't have a problem with trading options, okay? But the bottom line is you got to remember one thing and one thing only is that is that you really need to focus on the, on the, on the strategy. And the strategy truly is when you get these big buy and sell reversals, you wait for the first pullback where you can start trading options if you like to go along. Uh, and if we get the first bounce, you can go short. And that's how I would, I would apply the options. But to intraday trade options, unless just you learn the strategies I teach you, I will tell you emphatically, it's very difficult. Um, exactly. There's no emotions in paper trading. Once you start pulling the trigger, you're going to start understanding what emotions, but you should not have any emotion. Uh, I've been paper trading for seven years. I learned a lot and still learning. Well, now it's time, John, right, to learn my strategies and to start going live, right? So uh, what else? Um, let's see here. I agree with the paper training. Uh, um, you can, let's see. It's just so many. I'm just trying to, can you use on the Hang Seng? Uh, it, I believe you can. Uh, I mean, the strategies work on the Euro Stocks 50 futures. As long as you can get the data, I think TradingView uh, has a data, right, Albert, for Hang Seng or something? I'm not sure. You got to look into it. Um, but the Eurostox 50 futures, um, the DAX, um, you know, and again, if on small cap, once, yes, it does work on small cap. If you just pull up the, the symbol on TradeStation and or TradingView, you should definitely get the, uh, the overlay on the symbols that you're looking at. But again, what we focus on each and every day are these same 39 names, okay? Because I feel like these 39 names have the most significant volume. AMD does 80 to 100 million shares a day. You want liquid names. You don't want illiquid names, right? Um, okay, I think, uh, yes, but it's black, black. Uh, I don't know, asking, I, there's so many. Uh, is there any, uh, okay, BH to everyone. Uh, really interested in learning your indicators right now. I use EMA. Well, you got to learn the, the strategies by coming into the live channel and looking at the, and studying the videos with me. Um, and I think that's important. Um, I'm in Bangkok. I love Singapore. You guys have TD Singapore. Uh, um, well, we only trade the U.S. session. So, um, okay. Asking, do you see any more here that I might be yeah. blowing by? Is Steve just scroll down to the end or get Albert to scroll down to the end for you? Okay, can you speak a little bit about the person that gets you with your system that is different than just putting in MACD? Okay, so first of all, um, I just, yeah, you look at a standard MACD uh, indicator uh, two is a directional movement that I tweaked a little bit. Um, I don't use the ADX, I just use the buying and selling pressure. Indicator three is my own overbought oversold oscillator. I don't use the RSI. And indicator four is my own predictive analytics. I believe there's almost 85 variables in there. So the strategies I do have, basically, it's all predicated on, 75% of the time, I'll use indicators one, three, and four. And then 25% of the time, I'll look at all four um, based upon a strategy, okay? Uh, let's see, I work from home and stay home online. Thanks for the time. Uh, what month are you on the future? September on that. You speak a little about, okay. So again, I teach the various different strategies. Um, no, I don't, I'm not here during the London session, but I teach people to how to use the software that you can use the software during the London session. Um, 
Um, you know, once in the blue moon, right, when we get aberrations in the market and we see significant oversold, overbought readings, right, then I, I you know, I'll position myself with ETFs, whether I'm going along the SDSs or I'm going along the SSOs or the UPROs. Um, and then a lot of people would take S&P future contracts for one to three day type of a, an extreme condition. But again, you have to play stops, right? Okay. Um, would you recommend getting a funded account? For, okay, so what a lot of people do is they trade their own account and then they look at a top step or an Apex or a Lilu. Again, one thing I want to be very clear with everybody, I do not make a penny transparency on any of these firms. If it's Optimus, Ninja, Trade Station, I do not get an affiliate fee. I do not get a dime from any of these funded accounts, Apex, Lilu, or anybody. I don't want anybody to say, well, Steve, you recommended this. Are you getting paid from that? No, I do not get paid. Okay, so this is recorded. So I'm telling you the truth. I do not get, I do not make a penny, a penny. Um, okay, I do not look at candles at all. Okay, so please don't drive me crazy with candles. Okay, um, I believe that um, I do have pattern, uh, Jeff, I do have uh, a strategy, uh, the down and up pattern. Okay and an up and in pattern. It's a pencil pattern, as I call it. I, it should be in the platinum. Okay, let me know if it is. Do you teach the indices? Absolutely, okay. Um, when are you doing stock options? Well, stock options, I don't really call out. I'm not gonna call, if I see a great pattern in the video, am I gonna tell you, go look at the 150, 155 call spread or the 150, call options. No, I'm calling a pattern on a buy divergence or a buy reversal. And that's when I'll say, guys, I'll be looking to buy NVIDIA here. If those of you who want to trade options, Jerry, you of all people, you know, when you trade Tesla, if I'm calling a long or a short, right, you're, you're jumping all over based upon the strategy, right? So, um, okay. What is the best way to learn your layout indicators? Again, coming into the live channel, and getting the uh, getting the videos, okay? All right. Uh, let's see here. I think there's. Um, how do I get access to Trading View? So you go to Trade. You have to have a. You have to purchase one of our plans, silver, gold, or platinum. And then you go. Once you do that, then you go to the Trade Easy site, and then you click on the tra uh, my SK overlay, and then you can get the charts right there. Uh, no problem to trade the US session. I work from home. Okay. Let's see it on Q and A here. This is this it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you recommend starting with micros? Yes, I do. Do you teach the trading indices? Yes, I do. During this U.S. session, uh, Miles, when I watch your YouTube video, you say you look for six to eight bars. You mean so? Yes. So remember, I said earlier, if I'm looking at a five-minute time frame, the trades should last one minute to forty minutes, right? That's eight. That's forty minutes, and on a three-minute time frame. I'll look at anywhere between uh, one minute to 24 minutes. You have to do all over again. What are the exact steps would you take to learn your system and how would you streamline it? Well, I built it. It took me almost nine years of my life. So um, the steps I would take is again, if I built the system. Now, remember, I was trading, you know, I traded probably nearly 2 billion. Well, not probably, I did trade nearly 2 billion shares before I started building the system. So I was already trading the markets. I wanted to fine tune the markets when the markets went to decimalization in stocks. So I, because the spreads were wide, there were increments of pennies, right? And I wanted to be able to now be able to call market direction where I was more of a, uh, in my day trading days, more momentum. I was big in the indexes. I was able to see the big buy and sell programs coming out. And I was really taking advantage of that and sometimes I was anywhere between three and 10% of the volume in some of the big cap names on the trading floor. But for me, if I had to do it all over again, um, well, I'll tell you this, forget about doing it over again. If I didn't have this, I could not trade now in, in the markets that we currently are in, okay? So building this software to me has been one of my greatest joys. And that's why I'm doing this now to give it, uh, to teach all of you, all right? Uh, let's see if there's one more here. Thank you, Steve. All right. So if that's not, um, all right. So again, when you come to the live stream, okay, 
I'm going to teach you, all of you how to look at indicators one, two, three, four. Remember, there's four steps process. One, understanding the indicators one, two, three, four. Understanding the numbers to the right of, of, those, uh, num of those indicators, right? And then learning the terminology and then learning the right strategies, okay? So for me, this is exactly how we do it each and every day, right? Right now, we, we are, you know, I'm seeing things I, like Albert's sitting next to me and, you know, we're, you know, as this webinar is going on and, you know, I'm pointing to certain things and, you know, it's just such a great joy that uh, like Albert, for example, got to know me a few years ago and, you know, how his life has changed and now basically how now he sees exactly you know, and look at the work that he's put in. He is here with me for a few weeks. He left his wife and his child home because the passion. Remember, I told everybody, my door is open. I don't charge $500 or $1,000 a day. You want to make the trip? Alex Joe from Montreal. Dimitri came from, uh, from uh, where did he come from? From uh, Spain, okay? I had people come from all around the world, okay? People here in the United States. Paul Joe from Ohio. People drive all over the place. Jeff came from Ohio, then on his way to Florida. My door is open, right? My door is always open. So, and I got Phil coming next week. I have uh, Jesus coming from Jersey, right? So my door is open. And that's the passion and the love I have to be able to give back. If you're willing to make the trip here, I don't charge you, right? You got a hotel five minutes down the road. I got a special rate for everybody that it comes here, a, a low, lower rate than most people would pay, right? We go out, we grab a bite later, we talk, you hear, you learn, you listen. Rita came from California, San Diego, right? People come from all around the world, all right? And so for me, there's no greater joy than to do this in my life right now. And this webinar was something I really needed to do. Uh, next week or so, I'm gonna do a webinar on Forex trading. And then the last one I'll do for the month probably be in crypto. Everybody, have a great day off, okay? I'm here. Again, my number is 914-500-7484. Please, if you're really interested, okay, I'm going to grow this platform with the likes of Victor Sparandio, Trader Vic. He was one of the biggest S&P traders in the world, a very endearing friend of mine, close to 40 years. I've known uh, Victor about 38 years. Tony Saliba, best of best you can think of in options. I'm going to really make this platform Felix Fry, uh, another great uh, educator and mentor in, in the options market. Um, Alex Gurchev, phenomenal, great friend of mine. I know so many, so many great people that want to be part of this. There's no greater joy than to build this platform to help change your life. Okay. And that's exactly what I'm, I'm going to strive to do each and every day for all of you. Have a great day. Again, any questions or anyone that wants to text me, 914-500-7484. Um, let me have a cup of coffee and I'm sure I'm going to get a bunch and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll return all your calls. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you, Ashling. Thank you, Albert. Thank you, Joe. Everybody, God bless, be well, and uh, let's be consistent and learn. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. It's a pleasure to see all the places that you're popping in the chat that you've joined us from from all over the world. Our community is phenomenal. Would I can't recommend it more. An amazing group of, of traders, incredibly passionate and supportive to each other. Um, I just scanning back through the questions that um, everyone has. So with regard to the recording, it's going to be sent to you. Access to the recording will be sent to you later today. Also, the bonus videos that Steve mentioned, so you don't need to reach out to us for those. They'll all be sent to you by email, and we'll have a special offer for new members if you'd like to come and try us and join us. Again, that will be an email. A few questions about um, Steve's number. I'll also make sure that's included in the email as well, so you can contact him on that. And with regard to the membership levels, so Silver is just access to our Discord community and our live stream. Gold is the same, but it includes our educational videos. And then Platinum is definitely the best experience because it has this level of live coaching for you four times a week, Monday through to Thursday. Um, and then, like Steve said, the difference between pro and non-pro is got to do with the, the stream that we use, Web or TC. So the pro plans that you can do all the live stream access from a mobile device and it has sub-second latency 
with a non-propan, you could just get it on desktop or laptop. So that's the difference in that. So support at tradeyz.com is our email address. If you have any questions, and Steve is so happy to take uh, messages for you as well. If you are from, from Europe or not from the States, best to WhatsApp him and he'll get back to you in his own time. So thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, we hope to see some of you as new members very soon. Have a great day. Bye.